pleased indeed that Jim Livingstone has given up his valuable time to come and talk to us here at the Game Conference. Jim. Thank you very much. <coughs> valuable time. Mm, not sure. Um, actually, sometimes I want, there are days I wish, the one wish I have, you know, if I look ahead over the next two years when you're at my stage of the career is, I wonder will I get a severance package? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but not today. <clears throat> not today. It's great to be here. And uh, uh, again, to see so many familiar faces. Although, apologies if I get the names wrong, because I'm very bad at faces and names. Um, and I wanted to just take the opportunity today just to talk to you about the 10 year quality strategy, which I hope many of you will know about. Uh, many of you may have been involved in its development, uh, and indeed, all of you will hopefully be involved in its future implementation. Um, so just to begin with a few questions, why, why quality? Um, and we started just, just about two years ago on, on this particular journey. Uh, when, when, well, I came into the job about three years ago. and After I'd found my feet for a while and talked to a few people, uh, I found a, a, a pretty common set of, of uh, factors around the place. A, uh, and indeed, a previous job I had in the department was director of primary care. And I had exactly the same experience that in trying to understand what primary care meant, uh, every time I spoke to somebody, I got a completely different definition. Likewise, when I got into this job, when I started asking people what they, what they thought quality was, I got a completely different def definition of that word. And that worried me because I thought, well, here we have as an organization uh, a system that introduced a statutory duty of quality, and yet everybody seemed to have a different understanding of what that meant. Um, but you know, we have that statutory duty, it's there. We have a, 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 a statutory requirement on us now to deliver quality. So if we don't all have a common understanding, then we better, we better get one. Secondly, a lot of structures have been put in place. In fact, they were very much focused on improving quality and delivering quality. Structures like RQIA, structures like GAIN itself, very much at the centre of the whole business of quality improvement. And a lot of policies, I mean, lots of policies around on clinical governance and uh, adverse incidents and complaints and you just name it. We had loads of policies, no shortage of those. But a lack of cohesion and a lack of definition. Uh, a lot of silos, but no, no warehouses, I would describe it. Um, a lot of people working on the subject, but not really recognising whether they were working on the same subject as people in the next room, i.e. quality, we're on the quality agenda. And fundamentally a lack of vision and a lack of direction. We've put all the building blocks in place, but no real sort of sense of, so where do we go with, with all of this? And next thing is, that why a strategy? You know, uh, what's, what is a strategy? Um, and this, to me, is the picture, and I've used it before, if others have seen it. It, to me, typifies you know, exactly the problem faced by health and social care, and indeed health services generally, or the public sector generally. These two guys are really good at their job. They have done a terrific job paving and putting in bollards around the pavement. They've probably been working flat out since 8 o'clock in the morning. They're tidying up the job. Problem was they just didn't keep an eye on the future. They just didn't lift their eyes at some point during the day to recognize they have a problem. They have actually boxed themselves in turn the van. The van has to, you know, the van can't be moved. So they're now going to have to remove the ball. So all of that wonderful work, all of that work that was done with great efficiency, great effectiveness, great economy, all of it focused on here I'm doing my job, I'm working really hard. But because of that lack of foresight, because of that lack of looking ahead, um, not really understanding that the real job requires that you must look to the future as much as look to today. And there is a sense in, the, in that the pressures that we work under, that everyone focuses on the here and now and, and forgets about the future. Um, uh, this was in Philadelphia, by the way. It was, uh, it wasn't taken by me, uh, but uh, it's useful at parties to try and guess uh, in who they are, what nationality they are, what age they are. They're obviously men, unfortunately. So maybe that says something too about uh, you know, the, the future focus. Women wouldn't have done that, I'm sure. Of course not. Of course not, no, no. 
No, they would have forgotten to bring the van. Um, but <laughs> uh, um, so why a strategy? It's looking forward. I mean, we need to understand the future in order to plan for it. And it is about the future, and it's about a, a, a distant place in space and time. It's not tactical. You know, it's not that we can see the problem that's immediately facing us. Uh, that's the day-to-day -day approach to business planning and, and systems planning, that we know the problem today, let's fix it. Um, it. It's much more strategic, is about actually dealing with uncertainty and dealing with unknown. Um, in this case, it's the enemy. They're in a, in a distant place. I know something about them, but not everything about them. I have to take certain risks. I have to deal with uncertainty. I have to plan in anticipation of things going wrong, etc., etc. I need to be look, taking that longer term strategic view. Why 10 years? And this was interesting because when we started to set about developing it, we had a range of views that you know we should develop a strategy for the next three years. Uh, we should develop a strategy for the next 50 years, next 25 years, uh, and it really sort of bounced around for, for, the, for the guts of a day during one of our first workshops. But gradually the view coalesced that, look, we, the, the sorts of things that we need to deal with in terms of delivering quality will take time, more than just two or three years, more than just an assembly, more than just one budget cycle. But let's not go for something fancy like 25 or 40 or 50 years when most of us will be dead. Certainly, I won't. I, I don't. I want to be around when it finishes, you know. But um, uh, something that was 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 credible, long enough to be useful, as I said, and credible. And uh, and it is uh, important to recognise that uh, a lot about what has to be addressed in terms of improving quality is about changing behaviours. And one thing I can give a, a view on in terms of the, the uh, human behavior is that it takes time, indeed a lot of time, to change behavior. And if you think about a lot of the issues that we deal with in terms of, say, patient and client safety, uh, so much of it is not about the resources or the systems, not unimportant, of course, but a lot of it is actually to do with the behavior that people engage in. And changing that behavior will take time. And planning to anticipate, I mean, we don't know uh, 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 a lot of the things that are facing us in the future. We know about the budget. We know about the lack of resources. That's over the next three years, maybe five years, who knows? But, you know, look at all the things that have happened, you know, uh, in Japan and the sort of natural disasters, wars in, 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 in Africa. When you look around the world and you look in your own sort of environment, you can hardly tell what's going to happen next week, let alone in 10 years' time. If you're not planning for it, in terms of delivering health services where we have to train people over three or four years, where we have to recruit people, where we have to build systems, then you need time. And 10 years is that credible, useful time. And health and social care is a juggernaut. And this is the thing that upsets me, I have to say, when I listen to the media. You know, they never seem to recognize that it's this immensely complex, uh, 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 and in my view, very high quality service. It's a juggernaut, and trying to turn that juggernaut and change direction uh, is, is, is a task that takes time. And the, and the quality strategy was developed then over a period of about 15 months where we brought together uh, uh, about 100 people at four different workshops. Those people came from health and social care, frontline staff, clinicians, senior clinicians, the suits as we call them, the, the policy people, the uh, executive, the managers. We also had patients and carers. Uh, we had an incredibly uh, eclectic mix of people, all with a common interest in improving quality health and social care. It is they who produced a quality strategy. And what they did was they, they fundamentally produced a vision a vision of you know, where we want to be in 10 years so that we can move this juggernaut in the right direction. A mission statement of how we're actually going to get there. And focused in then, then on five strategic goals, the five key things that we need to change and improve that will actually give us that high quality uh, 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 vision uh, for, for, for the, the next 10 years. All underpinned by a set of strategic principles and values and assumptions, the sorts of things that will endure for that period and that will provide the basis upon which policy is developed and implemented over that period. 
And finally, a delivery structure, because strategy isn't much use unless you can't actually deliver it. So we have, we've got some good ideas, I think, there. Some innovative ideas to actually make this a reality rather than just an aspiration. And the vision, um, very simple, to be recognised by 2020 as an international leader for excellence in health and social care. Very simple statement. Uh, we argued over this for about a day. A hundred people arguing over a vision statement is great fun. And the sorts of comments where, you know, I don't want to have the word world in it. I don't even have a, I certainly don't want to have the word universe in it. I don't want to have the word Europe in it. And uh, people didn't like health and social care with capital letters. They wanted health and social care with, with lowercase letters. Uh, to be recognized. Uh, to, uh, uh, th th there were various other verbs that were used, um, praised, you know, rewarded, whatever. Um, a lot of thought went into this, and, and you have to read it carefully because it's, it's not recognised by some award or some international body. It is simply, wherever you go, people will look at Northern Ireland Health and Social Care and say, they are one of the leaders for excellence. By 2020, 10 years. Okay, we, we wanted 2020 because it, well, it fits nicely with 2020 vision, obviously. But it's, it's that period of time. International leader, not in Europe, not in, in the British Isles. This isn't just about the, the trusts and the hospitals and the GP practices. The service delivery will be the international leaders for excellence. It will be Northern Ireland writ large because in terms of uh, public health, in terms of self-managed care, in terms of patients and carers and users themselves, that it's important that the totality of health and social care is excellent rather than just what's delivered in health and social care institutions.